right here. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. Um, and one over there too. Uh, yes, yeah, so over there. So I stay here. Yes, but during communion, when you're right here, uh, you should move this microphone there. Oh, move it over. Yeah, during communion. Uh, well, but I need it after the offering. Yeah, so then you can move it back after. Yeah, so so uh, at the offertory procession, I'll move this over there. Yeah. Is that correct? Yep. All right, and then after communion, I'll move it back. Yes. Okay, I'm sure I'm going to play here. Um, either's fine. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. Good. Cool. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Uh, one more quick question. Will you be distributing communion? I will. Okay. Then I'll be the count for this. Good morning, and welcome to St. Thomas Parish. Today is the 18th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our intentions for this Mass are Thomas Park, John H. and Norma Anderson, Joseph A. McGatz III, Arthur McManus, John W. Anderson Sr., Linda Sutton, and Claire Dempsey. Our celebrant is Monsignor Layton.
Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our celebration of liturgy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear friends, we come together this morning so that we can open up our minds and hearts to the Lord, who shares his life with us now in word and sacrament, and in our gathering together in faith. Aware then that we are in the presence of a God who loves us, reaches out to us, and invites us to a never deeper relationship with him, we pause for a few moments and call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you are the bread come down from heaven. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Christ Jesus, you feed us with the bread of everlasting life. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you satisfy the hungry hearts. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. All together we proclaim glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. <clears throat> you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The whole Israelite community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, Would that we had died at the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt, as we sat by our flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. But you had to lead us into this desert to make the whole community die of famine. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will now rain down bread from heaven for you. Each day the people are to go out and gather their daily portion. Thus will I test them to see whether they follow my instructions or not. I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, in the evening twilight you shall eat flesh, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread, so that you may know that I, the Lord, am your God. In the evening, quail came up and covered the camp. In the morning, a dew lay all about the camp, and when the dew evaporated, there on the surface of the desert were fine flakes like hoarfrost on the ground. On seeing it, the Israelites asked one another, what is this? For they did not know what it was. But Moses told them, this is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I declare and testify in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. That is not how you learned Christ, assuming that you have heard of him and were taught in him, as truth is in Jesus, that you should put away the old self of your former way of life, corrupted through deceitful desires, and be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and put on the new self, created in God's way, in righteousness and holiness of truth. The word of the Lord. From the Holy Gospel according to John. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they had found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, Amen, amen, I say to you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father, God, has set his seal. So they said to him, What can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. So they said to him, What sign can you do that we may see and believe in you? What can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. So Jesus said to, to them, Amen, amen, I say to you. It was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear friends in Christ, <clears throat> how many of you went to the uh, Elks fish dinner last night? Oh, well, there were, it was a mob, a mob of people. That was the first time I'd gone to that, but I, I thought it was really fascinating. They have quite a production to feed that big crowd. It sort of reminds me of Pian. Uh, no feeding the 5,000 that Jesus did, only they had a lot more people. And then on, uh, what, Friday, three weeks, two weeks from Friday, they're going to have the, the barbecue, the annual barbecue here, which is always, always also, I find, a very nice event. And 
nice crowd comes and the food's always delicious. So I'm looking forward to that. I hope you are too. Notice our readings today are about food, about food in the desert, and how Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt into the desert. And once they get out in the desert, they grumbled, as you heard, against Moses and Aaron and said, would that we had died at the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt as we sat by our flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. So they were hungry out in the desert. And they were complaining. Now they didn't really understand who God was. And they didn't understand this journey that they were on. That God was really freeing them from slavery. And so they complained and complained. And then you heard the Lord said to Moses, I will now rain down bread from heaven. Each day the people are to go out and gather their daily portion. Thus will I test them to see whether they follow my instructions or not. I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them in the evening twilight you shall eat flesh, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread, so that you may know that I, the Lord, am your God. It took them time to really understand that message that God is the Lord. And you know, it takes us time too to really understand the message that our God is the Lord and that Jesus is our Savior and our friend. You know, we come here, and we come here, if you think about it, because it's Sunday and we get into our tradition. We have a tradition, we go to Mass on Sunday, which is a good thing for us to do. But <clears throat> I would hope there's more to it than just the fact that it's Sunday and we're Catholics and we go to Mass on Sunday. I think we really need to appreciate what it is that we do when we come here. But we all have a hunger. I have a hunger. I want to know God better. <clears throat> I want to love God more. That's inside of me. And someone asked me not too long ago, now that I'm a retired priest, what's on your bucket list? Well, I thought, uh, oh, I actually didn't think. It just came right out. I want to know God better so that I can love God more. I say, well, you know, haven't you done that? Haven't you, you know, I've, I'm a priest 59 years. Haven't you been doing that? What? Well, yeah, but a few times along the way, you drift, and we drift, don't we? Because sometimes we get overwhelmed with other things, busy things, you know, all sorts of problems and challenges, right? That are part of everyone's life. And even though we might at times go through the rituals that are part of our Catholic life. At times, we don't really reflect on what they really mean and what God's trying to do for us. Now, for instance, <clears throat> the Exodus. Do you ever think of the Exodus as, as really a symbol of our own life? The Lord took the Israelites from the slavery of the Egyptians and led them through the desert for 40 years to the promised land. Well, 40 years is, in a sense, a sign of the time of our lives. It's our generation. And so, notice how the Lord leads us. From what? Well, maybe from the slavery of our selfishness, our self-centeredness. And how, how it's only when we learn to love, love God and love somebody else, that we are able to really be free 
free of selfishness and self-centeredness and really grasp life has meaning. And <clears throat> even though in the desert part of our lives, times is difficult. We complain about this God. Where are you? Why aren't you here with me in my struggles and difficulties? And as we look back, you know, so many times it's going through the pain, the difficulty, the struggle, that we really, in a sense, are, are stripped of our selfishness and come to appreciate the real value of loving, giving of ourselves to another person and receiving the love of another person, receiving the love of God. That's our journey to the desert. And we hunger. I hunger. I want to know God better. I want to love God more. And Paul, in that second reading, he's aware of that. You know, whenever we listen to St. Paul, we have to just keep in mind, here's a man who was opposed to Christians. Christians. He, didn't, he, he was actually going to persecute Christians in Damascus, and God touched him. And God enlightened him so that he became a man filled with the Spirit of God. And that's why he's telling me Ephesians. And this is about, you have to keep in mind when this was written, I think, anyhow. It was written usually at the late 50s. So that's about 20, 30 years after Jesus rose from the dead. Well, Jesus rose around 33, 43, 53, so 25 years you had about Paul. <clears throat> And he was so inflamed, really, empowered by God, that if this is what he's writing, I declare and testify to you that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. That is not how you learn Christ, assuming that you have heard of him and were taught in him as truth is in Jesus, that you should put away the old self of your former way of life, corrupted through deceitful desires, and be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and put on the new self, created in God's way in righteousness and holiness of truth. You know, we hear the readings, don't we? We hear the readings, but we don't really pay attention to them. Oh yeah, they're sort of fillers. We have to fill in this time to enable the service to be long enough. So we put the readings in. No, no, no. See, God speaks to us. Aren't we blessed? God speaks to us to awaken us. I need to be awakened to God's presence in my life. Why? So that... I can live, as Paul said, in the new self, a new self that's aware of the love of God and how God reaches out to me and helps me. And in the gospel, Jesus is telling us pretty much the same thing. That we need to be conscious of God's loving presence. Uh, they wanted a sign the Jews. He had already you know, multiplied the loaves and fishes and fed 5,000. Now they say, you know, well, can you give us a sign? Were, were you not paying attention? <laughs> he gave them the, the sign. And they say, well, our ancestors ate manna, manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. And Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven. My Father gives the true bread from heaven. But that's all very symbolic too. What is the true bread? 
Well, in just a few moments, now we're going to continue our liturgy. And I'm going to say the words over the bread, this is my body. And over the cup of wine, this is the cup of my blood. And through the power of Jesus, working through the priest, it no longer is bread, no longer wine, but it's actually the body and blood of Jesus, the living, risen Jesus in our midst. You know, that's hard to believe. A lot of people say, well, it sounds good, but it sounds very pious, but really, no, it's not possible. It's not possible. What is possible? Well, you know, when you go to the ocean and sit by the ocean and you see the waves roll in and hear them, what's possible? God's incredible creative intelligence able to create all the beautiful things that we take for granted. Huh? When's the last time <clears throat> as you sat by the sea did you say thank you God dear God this is truly beautiful. Thank you for allowing us to share in your beautiful creation. We have to be more conscious of God's presence in our lives. And that's why you know, Jesus said it wasn't Moses who gave the bread from heaven. My Father gives the true bread from heaven. And what is that true bread? It's actually Jesus himself who comes to us. Aren't we blessed to have Jesus come to us and share his life with us? Why? Well, one is one reason is because he loves us. You know, he loves us just as we are. A lot of people find that a challenge, don't they? To love us just as we are. But he loves us just as we are because he knows how we can be, how we can grow, how we can love. And so, he wants what is best for each one of us. And what is best for each one of us is that we be in touch with the truth of God. Jesus, who is our way, our truth, and our life. How blessed we are to be able to share in the very life of God himself who knows our hunger for truth, reality, and life, and shares his life with us so that we can be the people that he made us to be. So join with me in prayer now. I always like to pray at the end of the homily because I believe God's with us. He shares his truth with us. And so you can repeat after me. Dear Jesus, thanks very much for allowing us to be here today. We come, Lord, with a deep hunger to really know you better and to love you more. A lot of times, Jesus, we get set adrift and don't recognize that you're truly with us. Jesus, let your Holy Spirit enlighten our minds and hearts so that we can focus on you who are the true food that enlivens us now and brings us to eternal life.
we join together now in our profession of faith. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, arose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the bread of life that truly satisfies so that our world will hunger and thirst no more. Let us turn to the Lord in prayer. Our response is, merciful Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, for grace to be bread for others, to satisfy the hunger of the world with the generosity of our lives that the church may seek to satisfy the deepest longings of Christians who hunger and thirst for Christ, we pray. Lord, 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 Lord hear our prayer. That world leaders may provide for the basic needs of their people and treat them with human dignity, for an end to racism in the world, that all who are never satisfied with their material possessions may reject the false allure of wealth, we pray. Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. For courage among us to speak for those who have no voice, to protect the poor, the hungry, the child in the womb, the immigrant at our door. For those among us who grumble and struggle with daily life, who are distracted by worry and doubt. For the grace to trust that in the embrace of God's love, we will never go hungry, we pray. Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have responded so generously in the past to the House of Charity, Bishop's Annual Appeal, and for all who will respond generously so that the Diocese of Camden will be able to continue to care for those in need, we pray. Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. For families who live with addiction, for those who struggle with <gasps> mental illness or depression, for all of the sick of our parish community, for the safety of our troops in the military, our first responders and essential workers, we pray. Merciful Lord, hear our prayers. For the eradication of the coronavirus and for those who have died, especially Thomas Park, John H. and Norma Anderson, Joseph A. Magatz III, Arthur McManus, John W. Anderson Sr., Linda Sutton, and Claire Dempsey. Also, please remember the souls of those who have died recently, especially Biddy DeFeo and Michael Lang Sr. We pray. Merciful Lord, hear our prayers. And for all of our own personal intentions, which we mention now in silence. We pray to the Lord. Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, Bless all our families and help them to lead their children to you. Give them wisdom and strength when they face difficulties and fill their homes with joy. Help us to reach out to them in love and concern and to embrace them fully in our parish community. Accept this prayer through Christ our Lord. Our communion procedure is as follows. 
You'll exit the pews to the side aisle, receive communion, and then return to your seat through the center aisle. House of Charity forms can be found in the pews and on the tables in our main church foyer if you wish to make a donation. The chicken barbecue and 50-50 tickets are sold after all masses. The cost is $20, and our barbecue is Friday, August 20th. The Catholic gift shop in St. Philip's Hall is now open after all Sunday masses. Tickets may also be purchased there. Our summer mass schedule is Saturday, 4 o'clock p.m., Sunday, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9.30, and 11 o'clock a.m., and 5.30 p.m. All masses will be in the church. Next week, we will have our summer parish mission, a time of spiritual renewal, August 9th, 10th, and 11th at 7 o'clock p.m. See the bulletin for details. And for parish information, please take home a bulletin or visit our website, stthomasbrigantine.org.
My friends pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Up Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Lord of heaven and earth, through Christ our Lord. For by your word you created the world, and you govern all things in harmony. You gave us the same word made flesh as mediator, and he has spoken your words to us and called us to follow him. He is the way that leads us to you, the truth that sets us free, the life that fills us with gladness. Through your Son you gather men and women whom you made for the glory of your name into one family redeemed by the blood of, the, of his cross and signed with the seal of the Spirit. Therefore, now, and for all ages unending, with all the angels, we proclaim your glory as in joyful celebration we acclaim. journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask as you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your son in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, almighty Father, give us life through your spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son and confirm us in the bond of communion, together with Francis, our Pope, and Dennis, our Bishop, with all other bishops, with priests and deacons, and with your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the Church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the Gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection, give them the fullness of light. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. Thomas, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to the Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with you, Spirit. Knowing we are in the presence of Jesus, we offer to one another a sign of his peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to only say the word.
Let us pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. Amen. May he let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Amen. May the Lord give you his peace. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come upon all of you and remain forever. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. Have a wonderful day, everyone.